You know, tonight we saw some really cool stuff. We saw this fitness convention round table with all these really awesome athletes and coaches and business owners. Kalipa, Stacey Tovar, Tim Thackeray, Anders Varner, Jared Perlmutter, everyone was around, everyone was available. You just sat at their table and talked to them. Ben Smith was telling war stories to an entire table. Super cool. After all of that, it was John Swanson announcing that the Granite Games is gonna be the second ever sanctioned CrossFit Games qualifier. Let's talk a little 2019 updates. First and foremost, our event's gonna be changing. Our event will be changing dates. We're gonna be moving to June, which is gonna be a really fun year for my team because we lose a lot of planning. But what I'm really excited to announce is I can finally say in front of all of you guys, we're excited to announce that we're going to be joining Dubai and the Grand Games is going to be the second sanctioned cross the event. So there you have it, folks. The Granite Games will be one of the sanctioned qualifying events in the 2019 CrossFit Games season. Not only that, they're moving to June in order to make it happen. And, well, I got a chance to sit down with the man himself, John Swanson, and kind of ask him some questions that I had about how and why this is all happening. Check out the exclusive interview right here. Hey, guys. Crazy bastards. They're amazing. I honestly, yeah. they give me goosebumps. These volunteers, they give me goosebumps every The time. fact that they... Uh, like, they give up their work, but this John down here in the white shirt, John, he legit, he's like, CrossFit's changed my life, that's why I'm here, because I want to give back to CrossFit. Well, that setup knows exactly where so to put two it. two and a half feet from the... On the gray line, so that 30 needs to get pulled two inches to the gray line. Right on the gray line. two and a half inches off each side. Two and a half feet. Yes, yeah, sorry, two and a yes. half feet, excuse me. Okay, I'll come And then have them put... A Sharpie dot on each side, so if yeah. they do move, yeah. the wad setup knows okay. exactly where okay. they need to go. There's never a moment in a uh, setup the size of the Granite Games that you're not like thinking about that or trying to fix some sort of logistic issue. Yeah. How do you even wrangle? How big is your team? Uh, you know, so we talk a lot about the the five or six hundred volunteers. Um, we have a core staff of probably six, five, maybe five or six that are exceptional. I would go, you know, we always talk about being in the foxhole and when everybody turns and runs away in battle, your foxhole stays. And I really feel blessed that the people that are on our team, that those five or six are those kind of players. And then we have directors that are all volunteers, that they're nurses, they're surgeons, they're stay-at-home moms. They have a thing that they do, and then this is a part-time thing. Part-time being loosely because they show up, you know, months out. One of the things I asked at our directors meeting this year is I said, number one thing I need to do is write down your why statement. I said, I need you to look at it every morning, every night before I go to bed. And I said, the truth is, if you're here because it says Granite Games on your shirt, you're here because it says staff or it says director or whatever that title is, I need you to leave. I need you to be here because you believe in something completely bigger than yourself, and you're not here because of the title. You're not here because this is the Granite Games. You're here because you believe in what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve. Because otherwise you'd get broken. The event will break you. There's just too many hours, it's too hard. But if you're here because you truly want to be here for something greater, you will be able to survive. And I've seen it, the event spits people out. It's actually quite beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's the great, best interview. But it, people love the stickers, they love the flash, they love the pro athletes. That's not even 1% of the event. That's so little of what that really is. And it will crush you if that's why. You know, using that as a lens for your decision making, what is it that is driving you to, you know, sanction the Granite Games as a CrossFit Games qualifier? I believe, uh, number one, being even on the list of those other events is a huge honor. Um, being on the list of, of Coach and, you know, Coach Glassman and having him think about us that highly is a huge honor. Um, but I do believe that we can help move the sport. I, I do. I, there's part of me that believes that we can help the professional athletes have an opportunity to make more money. Um, and I think the pros and that part of it plays a part in the ecosystem. I don't believe it's the whole ecosystem. I think what you saw tonight, us raising money for Never Ever Give Up and, and cancer and 
uh, you know, just all the things that we were mirroring with the everyday athlete. I think there's an ecosystem. I think all of it's kind of a key ingredient. I, I look at it as like if you're baking a cake, everybody's got a, a piece of the ingredient. If you can find the right amount of each ingredient, you have a really beautiful end result. And I, I see the sanctioning as being a part of what the Granite Games is, um, a part of it, a part of that beautiful thing. But there's going to be a lot of other things that also are in that that make up our culture and our community. Was it a challenging decision? Or did you know right off the bat that the, if the opportunity came up, you're going to take it? Um, yeah, I mean, no. I, 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 I didn't know what we were going to do. Um, I think there's going to be, it's going to be a learning curve. Um, what I like about what CrossFit HQ has said is that they're willing to take the feedback, they're willing to get in the trenches and look at how our events actually run from our pers perspective. Um, I think there's going to be a little bit of, of bumps in the road. I think there'll be growing pains. I, I looked at from all equations. Um, it wasn't a, a yes right away. It wasn't a no right away. It was where does this event need to be in five to ten years? And what is the impact it's going to leave? And ultimately, I feel being a sanctioned event is part of that key ingredient of how we want to do what we want to do and leave that, that legacy on our, our community and, and really the greater community. Is there full autonomy for you to run this event however you see fit? Or are there stipulations? Like, are you still able to be John Swanson, CEO of Granite Games, running Granite Games as you see fit, just sanctioned for this event? Or, you know, are you under the thumb? It's going to be a model that allows us to showcase our character, our brand. But I also love that there's going to be a professional standard of how to host an event, something that I actually believe on. Um, I'm really excited that there's specific safety things that we have to meet. Stuff that we, I mean, when I saw the list, I'm like, yep, yeah, we check all these boxes. But what it's great is all the events have to, all the ships are going to race. Everybody's going to be improving their safety protocols, um, their floor layouts. And it's, you know, we just talked about that. Like, all those things matter. Uh, the fact that you guys can't tell, but in lane, uh, the first box out there, the, the first working section, those stickers are all shipped exactly 12 inches forward because there's an assault runner that's going to be shifted to two feet to the right and that we double we spent three hours testing how a bar would roll where it would move safety is so critical for our events the truth is they sign up and they want to come have fun they don't ever think about what could happen that's my social responsibility can i think of everything no i can't three things are going to happen but the level of safety and how it's going to be held to a higher standard today our tribe we had eight lifeguards in 40 athletes Triathlon, you only need one lifeguard per 40, we had eight, right? And it's like, but I also look at it, that is our responsibility. So do we get to have our own spin? Yeah, I get to create our own workouts. We get to do our own thing. And I think that's amazing that CrossFit is giving us that blessing. But I'm also really excited actually of the things that they're requiring of us because I believe they're things that we should all be playing by. You know, the insurance policy, all those things. Um, that has me excited. I really think when it all shakes out, this will be a beautiful thing for the community. Um, and people can say, well, John, you're biased. You have so much to win from that. I'm like, maybe. But now, if you really look at what's going to happen in a couple of years, it's really going to be great for the CrossFit gyms. It's going to be really great for the athletes. I think it's going to be really great for all the events and all the brands. I really believe that from an entire whole, this thing is going to be the, one of the best things that's ever happened. Is it, is it quick and fast? Absolutely. I think it caught us all a little bit by storm. Um, but there's also a little bit of beauty in like saying, look, the ship's not going the way it's that that coach sees it. He's ready to make change. Like, there's a level of like admiration of saying, it's, "We're gonna we're gonna make some changes, and we're gonna do it now." Um, I like admire and respect that level of, of change. Yeah, the way that I kind of saw it was this idea of what better time than now. The best time would have been you know four years ago when coach first thought, "Hey, this isn't where we should be going," yeah. but the worst time is to wait mm -hmm. at any point in the future. It's so like once you understand that decision, I think, um, you know, Glassman is very good at understanding, you know, the economics, the calculus of like how challenging and how dangerous it could be to wait on a decision like this. Is there a, a facet of this that worries you more than any of the others? Is there, is there like a, is there a point on this thing that you think this is the weak point? This is the point that we need to nail and fix before it falls apart. Um, 
I think I know what you're asking, but I'll, I'll answer you on what I believe the answer is. The thing that I have to fight for, the weak point, is how my culture and my community think we will change and versus what we stand for. And that was something I addressed tonight in front of the group. Our event is and always will be for the greater community, for everybody. And we will never change that. And just because we're a sanction, because you can come to my event and you can make it to the CrossFit Games, it's easy that perception can change. But that's not who we are. We're an event that started because one athlete was 300 pounds and she did not believe she was an athlete. She didn't have that mindset. Even though she did, it was always there. And we started an event, we started this competition because we wanted to prove to her that it's not, an athlete is not the physical capabilities, but it's the mindset of how you attack life. And that's what we've carried through to our event for all you know, 20,000 athletes that took part this year. They're athletes, all of them. And our event will always be about all of the athletes, the pros included, also the scaled, also the teens, also the masters. Our event is for everybody. Now, you know, the old saying about, what is it, uh, fair and equal aren't necessarily the same? Yeah, that's true a little bit too. Like, did we have an extra day of competition for the pros today? Yeah, they got to do some really cool things. But I'd also say it's the right decision to allow them to have that extra day of competition. I don't think that volume would be right for a scaled athlete. So being able to accept everybody, absolutely. Doing everything the same for everybody, not necessarily the case, but doing what is right for everybody, by all means. Awesome. Well, I'm excited about it. I'm pumped to see it. I The first time that I heard that the games were going to be changing and that the format was going to be going to something like this, the one of the first events that popped in mind was Granite Games because it's it stood the test of time more than a lot of other events have. I mean, there's a very full graveyard of events that have just fallen by the wayside because it's too expensive or too tough or the times are changing and people are, aren't getting what they expected, whatever it is. And so knowing that you guys were around, that you guys are 100% part of this like you know community drive, I felt like it was going to happen. So I'm, I'm glad that it happened because I think it's necessary. Like If you had not, I wonder what would have happened with the entire process. I think. Well, one of the questions I got asked tonight is like, how did you create this thing? And, and it's interesting. I'll ask you a question because I don't know the answer. It's, of all the events that started when we did outside of the games, I don't know a single event, and I don't know them all, so I'm not, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I don't necessarily know an event that has the same group still running it. Like, I don't, I don't know, um, I don't know when we were in 2011, I don't know another event group that is it's the same cast, right. the same event. Um, and you know, so that question came up a lot today, it's like, how did that happen? And I was like, it's a marathon, it's a journey, just make, we've always tried to make decisions, hard decisions, that were best for the community. Not always the decisions that would be liked by the community, but would ultimately allow us to be here year after year. Um, there's definitely a long game of what we're trying to do and achieve. And you're just starting to see, like we're just coming out of our infancy. We're just starting to figure it out of what that impact's gonna be, raising money for cancer and raising money for affiliates and doing these things for athletes. Um, but I, I'm kind of interested is, two things I hope happen out of this, I'm proud that we stood that test. That's like kind of a, a neat badge. We also just might be the craziest. You don't really know. Like, we might be here just because I was more stubborn and a little bit more crazy than everybody else and everybody's smarter than me and they walked away. But what I do hope is that I, I hope that this is not status quo. I hope that now, the way the sanctioning happens, I hope everybody stands the test time. So I'm proud of the journey we went on, but I also hope that that isn't the par for the course moving forward. I hope they all flourish. I hope they are all successful. I really think that allowing us to become a family allows the event owners and producers and directors to communicate. That was one of the things that nobody wanted to talk about before. And we wanted to share something, how to do something. You know, right. To this day, I don't know how to do an event book. I only know how to do my event book. Nobody's ever shared one. Right? We had to do everything from scratch, which is kind of silly. And so I love that you know, even now that this is starting to happen, like, I've had so much more communication with the other events because we're not competitors. You know, but really we're actually a community and that like that has me so excited. I'm excited that we able we're able to last because we're, we're just stubborn. But I'm excited for the future of, of collaboration. Yeah. Now we got You do not have one
runner at the right spot. You know what? I bet you they just got the rowers out there and then they're getting pulled into place after the sturdy mats are exactly where they need to be. I shouldn't underestimate my team. They're fucking smart. They know what to do. So, um, yeah, they got it.